the president of Argentina, who gave the World Economic Forum a lot more than they were bargaining for when he addressed their conference at Davos. Uh, the uh, South America's answer to Donald Trump, he gave it to Klaus Schwab and his henchmen with both barrels. He told them that the West was abandoning freedom for socialism, which he warned only ever produces poverty and piles of corpses. Then he slammed radical feminism for its gender quotas. He slammed the environmental movement for demonising human beings. He slammed universities and media for promoting social justice, which he told them typically ends with injustice. And then he concluded by telling them he had come to invite the Western world to return to freedom, economic prosperity and limited government. Have a listen to how he concluded. Do not be intimidated, intimidated either by the political class or by parasites who live off the state. Do not surrender to a political class that only wants to stay in power and retain its privileges. Do not surrender to the advance of the state. The state is not the solution. The state is the problem itself. You are the true protagonists of this story. And rest assured that as from today, Argentina is your staunch, unconditional ally. Thank you very much and long live freedom. Damn it. <laughs> Long live freedom. Damn it. Liz, could this guy get any better? And Klaus Schwab, he must have been squirming in his seat. Absolutely. Malay literally climbed into the belly of the beast just to implode. There was a lot of people disappointed that Malay was going to the West at all. It was like, why is this guy mm. visiting Davos? This is exactly why he did it. He did a Ricky Gervais at the Golden yes. Globes, but WEF version. This guy lectured them on the wonders of capitalism and how can you oppose it when it's dug so many millions out of poverty. He lectured them on the core values of libertarianism. Every single one of those core values of course, is something that the WEF vehemently opposes. This guy couldn't get any cooler. And they keep trying to <laughs> denounce him across the world as saying, oh, he's a Trump-like figure. Unless you've been living under a rock for the most recent few weeks, that's a compliment. <laughs> the guy's winning. He's on top. Absolutely loved this. Has he convinced you, Joe? Well, I think he, I think he was being um, undone. He was being undermined by his translator because at the very end he was obviously wanting to say, long live freedom, damn it. But the translator goes, long live freedom. Damn it. <laughs> it was like his <laughs> William Wallace <laughs> like, moment, you like, know. Long live freedom. Damn it, where are my car keys? <laughs> and, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing. I mean, obviously he's great fun. He had me at the sideburns. He's awesome. These guys are amazing to watch. And the, the lesson for the left, though, and again, is that the reason why figures like this emerge, who they hate so much and fear so much, rightly or wrongly, is because they go so far in the opposite direction that it makes someone like Jair Bolsonaro or, um, or Javier Millet uh, or Donald Trump mm. or Brexit look good by comparison. Yeah. And again, th they just don't get it. You, you know, the, the fascist parties of Europe, of Italy, uh, the Nazi party in Germany rose up as a response not to Western liberal democracy mm. but to Bolshevism. It rose up in response to the Russian Revolution and people scared witless that what, was that what happened in Russia was going to happen there and that only a strong right-wing party like the fascists or the Nazis could protect them for it. That was a key ingredient to their success. And yet the left just never, ever learns this and it seems to go further and further in ridiculous directions, which again makes these guys seem less crazy by comparison, but also when they're thinking, if it's two crazy options, you know, well, I don't want X, Y and Z. And you can pick whatever woke policy or crazy policy you like, people losing jobs because of climate change or, you know, suddenly not being able to say what's a man or what's a woman anymore. So... You'd be crazy to write the Argentinian president off, though, as crazy, because if you listen to him speak, mm. I mean, he's brilliant at, like Trump is, he's brilliant at cutting through, he can do all the, you know, made-for-media hus hustle and, and bluster, but when you listen to him speak, he's actually very intelligent... He backs up all of his arguments with facts and figures. Yeah, he's an economist. And, uh, he's an economist, yeah. He's no dill at all. Absolutely. And something that the mainstream media, who hates on these guys, whether it's Trump, whether it's Malay, whether it's Gert Wilders in the Netherlands now, etc., and so on, any right-leaning leader, we've got the, the uh, Italy... What's her name? Georgia yeah. Maloney. Mala yeah. Yes. Um, another legend... 
What they don't understand is people love authenticity. And the really cool mm. thing about authenticity is you can't fake it. Mm. It is impossible to fake it. And what people see in these leaders isn't someone who's well-polished and well-spoken like an Obama orator type figure. Yeah. No, what they see is authenticity. They see people who love their country passionately and genuinely want to cut all the crap out and get their nation back on board. That's what they see in Trump. That's what they saw in Malay, especially now taking on the WEF even. It, it's just a beautiful thing to see. And who wouldn't want to take on this place? We already know what they stand for, pushing Agenda 2030 like it's 2029.